Well, Joey Carbstrong joins us now in the studio. Good morning to you. Good morning. If we could, let's go back to that one statement we mentioned in that clip where you once compared dairy farmers to Hitler. Do you still stand by that remark? Um, I've publicly retracted a lot of the things I said in anger. When you see abuse and cruelty happening to animals, it's natural to have a you know, a response, an emotional response. Uh, I always look at things from the animal's perspective. So th through the animal's eyes, dairy farmers aren't good people. They, they forcibly impregnate them every year, take their children away from them, they kill all the boys. And when their milk production declines, they send them to a slaughterhouse to be shot in the head and slashed across the throat. So through the cow's eyes, dairy farmers are not good people. Why did you retract the statement then? Because I feel like when advocating to a lot of the public, they haven't seen what I've seen. So it can be a far step for people, a far reach for me to compare dairy farmers to Nazis. But let's just look at the standard way we kill pigs in Australia is with a gas chamber, exactly the same way Nazis killed Jews in World War II. So we're using gas chambers every single day, killing millions and millions of pigs, and they're screaming, uh, begging for their lives in these gas chambers. How is that any different? So it sounds like you're not retracting from the statement. Well, when you look at it through the animal's eyes, this is a holocaust. Um, the word holocaust means slaughter or destruction on a mass scale. And if 74 billion land animals, 2 trillion marine animals murdered every single year doesn't constitute a holocaust, I don't know what does. Mm -hmm. OK, so millions of Australians obviously sympathise really strongly with dairy farmers like Casey Trelaw, yeah. who we also showed in that clip, mm -hmm. who she's her family and her livelihood has gone because of the issue of dollar milk. and. You responded directly to her as well in, in a fairly hurtful way. Why did you choose to do that? I wasn't very hurtful. I was actually quite sympathetic because I understand that she's been culturally programmed to be a dairy farmer. She's been, it's been passed down traditionally. She's lost her job. But I always look at it through the eyes of the real victim, who are the animals. The animals who are being exploited and be turned into leather jackets, killed in a slaughterhouse. She can get another job. Those animals cannot get another life. But do you have any sympathy at all for, for people whose, whose lives have been uprooted, who have lost their livelihood, who have lost generations. As you say, it's, it's the family tradition. It's their it's livelihood. livelihood. It's, their, it's their income, isn't it? But you don't like, have any sympathy for that? It's their income. And like I said, if you're making income off of the backs of other victims, I don't think that's moral. And I think you can find a job that doesn't involve directly exploiting and killing sentient beings. There's obviously absolutely nothing wrong with being a vegan. Can you understand, though, but that perhaps some people find your approach too extreme? Or do you feel you have to take such measures to get your message heard? Is being a vegan who is against the exploitation and harm of animals extreme? Or are slaughterhouses extreme? Are gas chambers extreme? Or are macerating one day old uh, male chicks in the egg industries in a big blender on their first day of life? Little baby chicks, is that extreme? Mm, well, it, it gives you a lot to think about. No, I'm a vegan. I'm against the exploitation and harm of animals. And most people hold this belief. You know, you probably hold the same belief too. You're against animal cruelty. If you've seen something happening to a dog, you'd be against that. Yulin, China, we scream bloody murder. But we sit down and we dine on the body parts of other animals that are murdered in slaughterhouses here. Is there any place to, to eating meat? Do well, you... Do you, do you do, you, do, do I you, think it's ethical can, in any way? Can you accept that some people choose to eat meat? I will never accept it. I think it's immoral and it's wrong and I don't think we should. I think we should uh, change our ways. I don't think we should uh, uh, stick to these traditions that are inherently cruel and abusive. And it's destroying the environment. The number one cause of Amazon deforestation, ocean dead zones, uh, land use, water use, climate change is because we want steak on our plate. And if that isn't the height of human greed, I don't know what is. We need to start moving towards plant-based alternatives that are better for our health and better for the environment and don't involve abusing and murdering sentient beings. So do you accept... OK, so, so that's your view, and we live in a democracy, and that's fine to have that view. It's also fine to have the alternate view, and it, it, it feels as though that you've got no middle ground. What's that the you alternate view, though? you don't accept the view... Well, lots of people do eat meat and choose to and, and don't see that they, they don't hold your views. So do you... Well, they do. They do. They just... They hold the same belief against the cruelty to animals, but they just don't... They're just not consistent with it in their actions. So, so the consumers are paying for this abuse and this cruelty to happen. Without the consumers going, hey, I want steak, I want cheese, none of these animals go to the slaughterhouse. So really the blood is on the hands of the consumer, and it was on my hands for many years as well until I changed. Do you think it's productive, though, to try... Obviously, you, you've got a message and, and you want people to, to listen to that message. Yeah. Is it productive, though, to be going up to farmers, going into their line of work and confronting them? Do you think confrontation is the best approach here? I think uh, debate and, and conversation and, you know, I always have debate. 
I mean... But is I'm, confrontation, because a lot of people who follow your views, and, and you do have a big social media yeah, following, yeah. a lot of people who do are taking very activist approaches, and you yourself do that as well, yeah. and it is confrontation that you are choosing as your path. Do you well, think that's the best way of actually convincing comes, people? Sometimes debate comes... I don't advocate for violent activism, if that's what you're asking. Uh, if there's, like, opposing views in a debate, I do think that that's important, so people get both sides. And if you're talking about activists going onto farms and exposing the cruelty, why are the vegan activists under more scrutiny than the farmers who are causing the animal abuse? Where are we at? Are we are, we, are more people turning to veganism? What's millions. Your... There are millions of people waking up every single day because they realise, wait, I hold this belief. I don't want animals to be killed for my steak. Like, we have millions of alternatives. So there's so many people waking up to that. They go, wait, um, I'm going to act consistent with my own beliefs or am I going to act against my own beliefs and pay for the, the harm of animals? Mm. Just quickly, what next for you? I know you were denied access to the UK recently, weren't you? What, yeah. What, what happened there? Uh, I didn't have a passport. Uh, I do now, so I'm allowed into the UK. Uh, I sort of bounce between London and Adelaide and I uh, sort of promote this message as much as I can. I think we all have an obligation to speak up against injustice, especially when the animals don't have a voice to speak for themselves. Okay. Well, it's an interesting approach and no doubt it'll spark debate amongst our viewers as well. I'm Thank sure you it will. for jo joining us this morning. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Joey, very right. much.